Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Now today is a special video because I am collaborating with the lovely Christine Stokes. Now Christine is a lady who is extremely talented and I've watched her tutorials on YouTube for a long time and I was so thrilled when uh, Christine did a video and she was actually following along with one of my tutorials. Uh, it was a mixed media page so I, that made me so happy that I had to get in contact with her and thank her and I said to her look it would be really fun I obviously follow you and you follow me if we could get together and do this collaboration which we are now doing so um, I'm going to be working with a color combination that Christine has also used I'll just pop this up for you so you can see absolutely beautiful colors um, we just picked this at random and said let's both use the same colors but let's also use some textures products. So I sent Christine some products. She already had some in her stash anyway. So it was quite hard trying to find products that she didn't already have. Um, but I know Christine used these leaves in her video and you can see that linked down below. And so I'm going to do a video with these as well. Now to celebrate this collaboration, we also have a giveaway. So I'm going to be giving away this entire textures in the stars collection you've actually got two there you'll just get one of those uh, the entire collection there um, which is the constellations the in the stars the papers the stencils you've got that dream catcher die and the sentiments dies this is all going to be coming out to one of you who has watched both of our videos so all we're asking you to do is comment on both videos let us know that you've been over to the other one as well and we'll pick somebody at random make sure you have commented on both and then we'll uh, be in contact with you for a postal address if you're the winner so uh, we'll keep this open for a couple of weeks before we choose to give everyone a chance to enter so let's get on with the tutorial now like I say we've got that beautiful color combination that we're both using I know Christine used um, distress oxides I've had a sneak peek at her video already um, and uh, as she did say it would be interesting to see which colors I chose and I think I've gone fairly similar with most of them I know one of them I have switched which is the green I've gone for more of a green whereas Christine has gone for the iced spruce which is a green but it's a gray green by the way if you've got an interest in distress oxides please do visit my distress oxide playlist where I'm going through each of the colors gradually um, alph alphabetically so actually uh, three of these colors have already been covered in those videos um, and by the way, if you are here from Christine's channel uh, and you've not been here before, welcome. It's really great to have you here. I would love it if you could give me a subscribe and a thumbs up while you're here. So these are the colours I've chosen. Uh, we've got Evergreen Bow, Bundled Sage, Victorian Velvet, Dusty Concord and Uncharted Mariner. I think they're going to look absolutely beautiful. Now I was going to do these on white, um, but I've actually chosen to go a little bit different. I'm going to do them onto craft cardstock. So I'm actually going to ink onto white, but I'm going to put the leaves over craft cardstock. So we'll see how that works out. Now, the first thing I need to do is basically get inking. Now, I'm going to cut out my dies, the leaf dies, and I'm going to cut quite a few of these out and create a nice spray of them. But I thought actually I was going to do my inking first and then cut them out. It's going to be so much easier than trying to ink fiddly pieces. So these are the dies and I think I'm going to probably cut out two of the large ones and then maybe uh, possibly two of these smaller ones and then put them into some sort of uh, composition. So I'm going to need eventually four pieces that are large enough to ink. So that will be one, that one will be another and then I'll need two. I think this it may bit that I don't think I'll quite have enough room so I'll have to find another piece of cardstock. Now if you've followed my videos for a while you know that I often use the clear blending mats from Craft Stash. I've actually gone ahead and I finally put some alcohol ink on the underneath of mine so I can see it. So when it's laying uh, in amongst a pile of papers or on my desk I'm not going to just mistake it for a piece of acetate anymore. Well, we'll see, it may still happen. So I think with each of these leaves, I'm actually going to um, ink them kind of in an ombre. So I'm going to go with the Uncharted Mariner first of all. And I'm not worried about the edges or anything, I just want to cover the area that's going to be die cut, as you can see there. So I go around about halfway with this, I think. 
and then that's going to go into green. In fact, while I'm here, I'm just going to pop these into a kind of a colour order as such. Um, I'm thinking maybe it needs to go this way. I'm thinking of the colours of the rainbow. So if you think about um, red, we haven't really got a red, have we? So green, blue, indigo, violet as such would be the closest sort of match for those. So that's the way they are going to go. So I've got my Uncharted Mariner. That's going to go into, because that would be in the middle. So that's going to go into Evergreen Bow. Now, for a long time, I used to call this Evergreen Bow. Um, just because around the area where I live, there's lots of place names that end in B-O-U-G-H. And we would say them as Bow. Um, so, <laughs> so it's been quite, um, quite a, a lesson for me and a learning to have to change the way that I say evergreen bow um, but thank you to everyone on my channel who did correct me because I to be honest I didn't realize I was even saying it wrong it's not actually a, a commonly used phrase or word um, in the UK here so we don't use it often so just to blending those two colors together there as you can see so I've gone from green to blue now with each of these I am going to uh, add some water for some interest on the inking as well I'll set that aside to dry for a moment while I ink some more of my panels. So there's my four leaves. I'm not quite sure what the composition is going to be yet, but do you know what? We'll work that out in a little while. So then my card base, and as I said, I'm going to go with craft cardstock, but I am also going to add some texture to this. Now I consider different ways of doing it. Uh, embossing folders and such but I thought you know what I'm actually going to create my own texture and that's using my scoreboard so this is not my usual scoreboard um, the usual one is my creative craft products one I'd usually have that to hand but that one's in my other studio today so I'm just going to go down adding a simple line on each of the score lines on my board so it takes no time at all just being careful not to press so hard that I go through the cardstock, but that doesn't usually happen, especially craft cardstock is quite, quite um, sturdy. So I've now got score lines all over this cardstock, and there's two ways you can see it. So you can see it, the lines on this side or the background on this side. I'm not sure which I prefer, so I'm actually going to bring in some picket fence and just drag this down almost creating a bit of a wood grain effect on the background so it's just touching the score lines that I've created but not in any even way that you usually would with ink blending I think it's going to just create a bit of a, um, a textured the background there I think that's quite nice it almost looks like a bit like a sort of aged metal even with the corrugated effect so that's going to go onto my card base which is going to be a tent fold it's uh, around about six by six card base there. And then somehow these are going to fall on my card. I haven't, like I say, I haven't worked out the composition yet, which I'll do now. So I want to make sure that the bottom, nothing overlaps at the bottom, but I'm quite happy for, for things to overlap at the top. In fact, I quite like when cards do overlap. Um, over the top and the sides. I just created a slightly larger envelope. It's just something I've often done. I think I'm going to stick those, all of those down first of all. I'm going to get a white pen and add some faux stitching around the edge as well just to enhance those edges because it is all quite pale and neutral um, and then we'll come back and think about a topper. So there's my uh, background all put together. Now, while I was doing that, I was kind of thinking through the composition of these leaves and I keep changing my mind. So I think I am going to go for something a bit different to uh, what I was originally going to do. And that's going to be, uh, so we can see the leaves a bit more, the shapes of the leaves, because I felt that by layering them up, you kind of lost some of the leaf shapes there. So instead, I'm still going to try and keep with this flow of color, um, but have something, let's just see. So I'm going to actually overlap some of the leaves off the edge of the card. I'm still going to keep the blue down in this bottom corner. I 
in fact bring that right down there like so so hopefully you can see there we've still got this flow of blue through to purple and pink and then through to green or turquoise and green and what I'm going to do is stick these down I've already backed them onto adhesive foam but I'm going to stick these down and then any of the excess leaves I can kind of tuck in as well to make more of a full uh, image or frame so that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to peel off the backing of each so this is as I say it's adhesive foam it's sticky on both sides uh, I get it from craft stash it's creative craft products brand I'll link it down below I use it all the time you'll see um, I'll, I'll use it on my um, sentiment as well when we come to that in a moment I'm going to put a nice bright white sentiment on this um, but before I do that I want to add a bit of texture to the background because usually I would have added lots of stamping and texture paste and all sorts in the background already so I'm going to bring in some white paint now this is actually calligraphy ink or calligraphy paint and it's uh, Dr PH Martin's bleed proof white um, you can grab this from I don't, Amazon places like that um, and it does dry a little so what I tend to do because I'm often adding water I think that's okay today um, but if it's dried in there a little bit I'll spritz a bit of water in and just mix it into the top and this has lasted me absolutely ages so I'm going to do some splats of white just over the leaves there try and get some big ones big blobs there we go nice big blobs come on Make sure there's lots of paint on the on the um, paintbrush for the big blobs. Doesn't matter if you go off the edge either. I'm trying to stick to just this kind of area though. There's that big blue leaf there that needs a little bit on. There we go. There, I've just added, I think I feel like I need a bigger, just one big blob here at the top. There we go much better and then I take the excess off my brush and then I also until I get time to go to a sink or a basin or wash it off and wipe it off the table as well I just spray my brush with some water for now just to clean it and make sure it's not going to go hard and dry on there before I get to go and wash it because once I'm into a project I don't want to be going to the sink so there we go sort of mini clean up I do have an area where I put all my dirty brushes and everything so that would take a few minutes to dry but while that's drying um, I do have some sentiment choices now I was talking about the giveaway that myself and Christine are doing and that's the in the stars collection from textures we're going to be giving away the full collection to one of you all you need to do is comment on this video and comment over on Christine's it's all linked down below and um, I'd love to see some new faces from Christine's channel I'm sure vice versa on hers from you guys who follow me regularly but the in the stars collection is the giveaway this is one of the die sets that come in with it so I've just die cut from this die set the word dream and I've backed this onto some foam which is um, really nice and easy to do again it's the same foam as I used for the leaves so I'm just going to peel off the backing here and try to put this on straight now I'm going over the wet ink so I've got to be very careful not to smudge the wet ink so just going to start with one letter get that down nice and straight and then follow along with the other letters always feel like the E is a little bit harder it's a little more wobbly because it's on such a thin stem there but there we go dream and then I'm going to finish the sentiment off with so this is from my sentiments for all paper pack unfortunately it is currently out of stock but it's coming back into stock middle of July which I'm very excited about because you absolutely loved it and it sold out very very quickly now I'm going to use a large of hair of scissors for this to cut into this. I've got the phrase here, you can do anything but not everything. So I'm actually going to use you can do anything 
I'm going to cut that reasonably close. You can use a trimmer for this if you prefer. And I'm going to take away the comma as well. So that's why I'm cutting it quite close. There you go, dream you can do anything. And you can cut these larger if you prefer with more of a border around them. And that's just going to sit there like so. So a little bit of foam tape on the back of this. Make sure everything's glued down. I've got to be careful because like I say, as you can see, the uh, paint is still wet. But there we go. Dream you can do anything. And that is my finished card. Uh, I've loved collaborating with Christy. It's been absolutely wonderful fun. I love the colour combination we've used and of course the products. The main focus I think in both of our projects was the Magnolia Leaf Half Tone Stamp and Die Set. Now just to show you actually very very quickly if you're wondering why it's a stamp and die set you've seen the outline dies that I've used and Christine's used the larger one of. Uh, they are all here so you've actually got five different leaf shapes these are the leaf shapes and this is the half tone stamp that also comes in the set. So uh, each of these, when you stamp them, rather than getting a solid image, you actually get, because it's made up of tiny, tiny little dots, you get variation in um, inking and shading within the image. So they're really good fun. And of course, once you've um, stamped your image, your leaf, you can then die cut it with the outline die. Now these dies don't leave you uh, one a border around the edge because I really don't um, always like that. So I wanted the die to cut out the stamped image absolutely perfectly. So it's a really nice way of adding shading to your stamped images. So there we go, there's that set. So thank you all for joining me, whether you are a regular visitor to my channel or whether you are new and have come over from Christine's channel. Um, I really appreciate it. I'd love a thumbs up and a subscribe. Everything we've used is linked down below in our videos. And don't forget to comment if you want to win that in the stars collection. Uh, we will reply to the comment of the winner. Um, both myself and Christine, once we've chosen it. We'll give you a couple of weeks to enter. So uh, we're looking at it being the, uh, is it the 3rd of July now? So we'll look at around the, um, say the 17th of July. Let's call that the cutoff date. <laughs> there we go. Thank you everybody for joining me. I hope to see you again very soon. Take care.